You talked about Navy SEAL Christians a while ago. Yeah. See, I think God's looking for Navy SEAL Christians. Yeah. My, my favorite Bible verse is 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Oh, it says, it. the eyes of the Lord search to and fro across the whole yes. earth to see whose hearts are fully committed to him so he can support them. Yeah, so yeah. you think about it, you know, these, these, these movies that we like where there's Navy SEALs and this one guy's, the, the enemy's coming after him. And this one guy says, y'all go ahead. I'll hold him off long as I can. So he's given up his life so that the mission can be accomplished. Yes. See, a Navy SEAL Christian is more interested in the mission being accomplished than whether or not he lives through, whether or not I live through this mission. If I get killed in a car wreck tomorrow, God's got somebody to take my place. It's because God allowed me to be killed and my time, my, my work was done. Right. But, but until God's ready for me to kill, I'm immortal. Mm-hmm. Until God's ready to take me home. So God's looking for Navy SEAL Christian, Navy SEAL prayer warriors who understand if we live, we win. And if we die, we still win. It's a win-win deal. That's why Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. We need to be Navy SEAL Christians in the world today where the enemy is more focused on taking us out than ever before. What would you say? We know uh, the passage in Acts 19 where these group of people are trying to cast out a demon and, um, you know, they're trying to use this incantation or magic. They use the name whatever. of Jesus. And they said, the demons spoke back to them. The demons, don't, they're not caring about them. Yeah. But the demon says, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know Paul. <laughs> Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? What would you say to the Christian believer who may not even believe uh, some of the things we're talking about and we actually want you to research this, open your Bible, have an open mind, an open heart, pray about all this. This may be brand new to you. But, uh, yeah, what would you say to someone who, you know, this is, we're probably shocking them maybe right now. Okay, well, that's a great question because I have that stuff. To get to, get to uh, you know, a spiritual, a place of spiritual authority where, yeah. you know, uh, they have power. Yeah. Well, uh, as a, let me tell you uh, uh, two stories that illustrate the answer to that question. One is, you remember my background is ultra conservative. So mm-hmm. I was speaking on this in Wyoming one time. And this uh, elderly man, he's probably mid 70s, uh, close to 80, had driven. Uh, uh, he was there every day. And I assumed he was part of that particular church where I was. Sure. And the last night, which was Wednesday night, is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, he came up and said, well, you, you did a good job presenting. And I said, well, thank you. Thank you for letting me come. He said, oh, this isn't my church. I live 30 miles away. I, I'm an elder in a church over there. He said, but you know, when Jesus ascended to heaven, all the demons went with him. Oh, wow. And I said, what makes you think that? Yeah. She said, well, he said, well, the casting out of demons only happened in the gospels. And when Jesus ascended to heaven, that, that doesn't happen anymore. First of all, that's wrong. There's two in Acts. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and you see multiple places where that is alluded to. World, but yeah. I said to him, I didn't want to argue with him or cause a, you know, a stink or something. So I said, well, would you agree that Ephesians was written after that? And it's to us. He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, let's read Ephesians six together, starting in verse, I think it's verse 12 or 14 12. through the end of the chapter. And when it got to the part that says our enemies are not flesh and blood, it's the principalities and powers and rulers of this present world. He said, well, that's just, you know, human beings that are presidents. And I said, no, they have flesh and blood. Yeah. It says a non-flesh and blood. Yes. And he went, he'd been a leader 40 years in the church. He'd never noticed that verse before. So I said, don't, don't listen to me. Listen to the word of God. And they're saying, the word of God is saying, all the writers, that we have unseen enemies and that's the true enemy. Okay. Yeah. Second thing is, then I would say, pray, pray and ask God to show you if this is real or not. Because I read, I read a verse, uh, um, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, and 1 John 4, verse 3. Both those verses say, if a man cannot say, Jesus is Lord, if he can't say that, then he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Because you can only say that by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So I read those one day and I thought, that's interesting. I've never heard of that, that possibility. And this guy walks in. I was in Burger King. I call this the atheist at Burger King. It's yeah. actually one of my podcasts. But this guy walked in. I'm, I'm all alone in Burger King because everybody's going through the drive through and heading out. And I'm, it's a quiet place to read your Bible. And this guy walks in. Turns out he's a retired professor from Stanford. And uh, his brother lives here in Longview. He's in visiting his brother for the weekend. He runs to Burger King to buy them some breakfast. I'm sitting here reading my Bible. He sees that. He walks up and says, son, where do you preach? 
And I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm not a preacher. I'm just a business guy. And he sits down in the booth with me, uninvited, which is okay, but weird, you know. Yeah. And he started to say some strange things about the Bible. And those two verses popped in my head. Can he say Jesus is Lord? Yeah. So I, I gently interrupted him. And I said, Dr. Smith, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus Lord? Simple three-word question. This 75-year-old retired professor from Stanford jumped up out of his chair and runs around the Burger King dining hall screaming at me at the top of his lungs, no, 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 who's Jesus? Gritted teeth, spitting, I'm wasting my time talking to you. I looked over and the Burger King workers were like this. And the drive through is backing up. And I looked up at him and I said, sir, I want you to know that I'm going to pray for you that someday you can know Jesus is Lord. That really made him mad. He yeah. ran right up to me and he stuck his finger right in my face. He's screaming and spitting on me. No, don't you dare pray for me. And I don't know why I did this, but I did. I smiled and I said, I can pray for you right now. You can't stop me. Mm. <laughs> and he screamed and ran out. The Burger King workers came out. We watched him run to his car. He slammed that glass door. I thought it was going to break right there in the frame. Mm. When he got in his car and backed up, it's right in front of Kroger here on Highway 80. He throws it in gear and floors it and he burns rubber. And it's only 50 yards to Highway 80. Yeah. And it dawned on me in that moment that he is defenseless against my prayers and he knows it. Yes. And I said, that I need to write something on spiritual warfare. Nobody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, one good thing is if you don't pay me, you can't fire me. Yeah. You see, this is why the preachers that start preaching on this, sometimes they get fired yeah. because the leadership, you know, they want to be so visitor friendly. They they're not willing to stand against the enemy. That's the true enemy. Yeah. Because the true enemy is invading the people around us and they don't even know it. They think it's the discipline of the Holy Spirit when it's the enemy. Yeah. It's Satan's and his demons attaching themselves to us. Yeah. And then we get into porn and other things, and all of a sudden, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to back off from us because we're doing things the Holy Spirit can't participate in. No. You know? And so it's a it's a day-by-day -day process of learning to purify ourselves, to be in the Word, to let the Word lead us, and let God show us something we didn't think happened. Yeah. He is the I am.